Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I titled this message, Testing Season, Do Not Forget the Lord. Testing Season, Do Not Forget the Lord. And basically, that is why some people are going through these wilderness experiences, spiritual trials, testing, they say. Uh, some of them will even say that the devil has a lot to do with what's going on. They're going through all these things because the Lord wants to get them to a place where, number one, they are drawn near to him. And when they're drawn near to him, of course, they're not going to forget him. But sometimes people are so happy, right? Happy in their blessings, happy in their achievements, happy in what other people are doing and so forth, that they get cocky and confident, as I've said in past audio. And then they forget the Lord, the Lord that brought them up out of the abusive family, that brought them up out of the illness, that brought them up out of being poor, broke, busted and disgusted. Oh, it's been 20 some years. I haven't had to worry about uh, bouncing a check or uh, it's been 30 some years that I haven't had to ever worry about. Uh, you know, where my money is going or where it's coming from. It's been, you see, they, they get so, so, uh, just self-absorbed and, you know, what my hands did. Now, a long time ago, it was what God did. And then as they get older, it's what I did. Okay. And some of these people got sons and daughters and they don't mind standing up in front of them talking about all of their accomplishments. And not one time do they mention anything about the Lord. But I'm here to remind some people today that just because they don't want to say, Lord, you know that the Lord had everything to do with why they got what they got and why they are where they are today. And some folks want to say, well, maybe if maybe if you would do A, B and C like I did then. And, you know, that's nothing more than pride. If I'm saying things like God and I'm saying that God used me or God is in my life or God is responsible for why I am doing what I'm doing. When I am giving honor and praise to God, then what is human beings going to do? They're going to look at God. They're not going to look at me so much. They're going to say, well, she said she went into her Bible and read it. So that's what I'm going to do. And she said that she uh, followed after God in this situation and that one. And so that's what I'm going to do. You see. And that's what we're supposed to do. But we got some individuals that, like I said, over the years, they didn't got so set in their ways and they're so focused on what their hands have done that they don't see God. But once again, I'm here to remind you to not forget about the Lord. And there's there are going to be some uh, trials, even more trials on top of trials when you want to be that one that talks about all of what you do as opposed to what God does. So. Let me give you a brief refresher on those Ten Commandments because I know they're not popular. Some people tend to forget and other people, well, they once had them up, but then they took them down, right? The Ten Commandments, you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. You shall not set your desire on your neighbor's house or land uh, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Now, I summarize it. I know I did. But if you want more, okay, um, you know, more details about the Ten Commandments, then I suggest you go over to Deuteronomy 5. Okay. Now, these are commandments that God gave and he expected the people to follow them and some of the people chose to do what they wanted back then just like they do nowadays and when they break the commandment or when they broke the commandments back then and they didn't listen and obey the Lord well there were always consequences for violating God's law his laws I must remind some people they have not changed they have not changed as much as man says, well, we've got technology, we've got new ideas and new systems and man is more intelligent now and all of that. God's commandments still haven't changed. OK, 
You might upgrade a few words, right? Be based on the times, but still, they haven't changed. You know there's consequences if you commit adultery. You know there's consequences if you steal. You know there's consequences if you murder. Okay? But the people, when they forget the Lord, they also forget his commands. You see? When they get so prideful, they forget what it is that God told them to do. They find excuses. And I'll tell you that when God is saying you shall have no other gods before me to be more specific. And I'm going to quote out of the study Bible uh, on um, Exodus 5, 7. You shall have no other gods before me. A God is whatever people put first in their lives. That means that could be that baby. That could be that um, money. It could be the house. It could be the brand new furniture for the house. Okay, some people, yes, they're very, very particular about furniture that shows up in their house. Oh, don't you touch this. Don't you sit here. Don't you put this there. And oh, they become quite difficult to be around when something new shows up. And that's why some people, they don't get new often because folks know how their personalities are about their stuff. So the Lord says a God is whatever people put first in their lives. Some people literally worship other gods by joining cults or strange religions. And I talked about that in a past audio talking about uh, people having other gods and following after all of these tribes. And I talked about the consequences of that and these individuals who associate themselves with the tribes of old. You want to associate yourself with the tribes of old. You got to know that they participated in some sinful activities. And many of them ended up being played with all sorts of demons and so forth. Okay. Because, oh, you want to do this sort of thing? And their names not being in the book of life and everything. I mean, is it really worth it? But they want to join these cults and these strange religions because I want to feel empowered because these people helped me and my, and my family or these folks were there in our community when none of them Christians was. And so I ain't following after no white Jesus and all this other stuff. OK, well, you just keep on talking all that foolishness. Right. We hear them. We see them. They're all around. And we know that God he is not pleased when people are spewing out hate, when they're dividing up folks in such a way where they're not dividing them up for good, separating the wheat from the tares. If anything, they're, they're doing more than uh, creating more uh, more uh, demon plague folks that got to go through deliverance processes and so forth. Putting them in mental enslavement, physical bondage. You got to report to the group. You got to pay your dues to the group. You got to be there for the group. You got to move when a group says. You got to stand on a corner when a group says. You got, I mean, come on. I don't follow after that sort of stuff. What I follow after is freedom, freedom in Christ. And I'm not looking at color. I'm looking at freedom in Christ. Once again, I'm not looking at color. I'm looking at freedom in Christ. So these people, they want to follow after these cults and strange religions and so forth. In a more subtle way, many of us worship other gods by, listen, listen to this, building our lives around something other than the one true God. So uh, my goals are, in life are, I'm going to uh, attend the university. Then after that, I'm going to find a good job. Then after that, I'm going to make some money. Then I might find a partner and then I'll marry that partner. Then we will create babies. Then we will get a house. Then we'll do this and we'll do that. And everything is about themselves and building their lives around their selfish interests, selfish gain, selfish whatever. And God is nowhere in the mix. If your greatest desire is for popularity, power, or money, you are devoting yourself to something other than God. To put God first, number one, you recognize what is taking his place in your life. Oh, this new man, huh? You're centered around him. So therefore, you don't go to church as much as you used to. You don't read your word as much as you used to. It's about my man and what my man wants, what my man needs, what my man desires. Well, at some point, your man's going to die. Then what? Number two, renounce this substitute God as unworthy of your de devotion. Okay, renounce, 
renounce that cult, renounce that group, renounce that strange religion that got you mentally, physically, spiritually bound. Point number three, ask God for forgiveness. Point number four, restructure your priorities so that love for God is the motive for everything you do. I'm doing this out of the love of God. I'm trying to keep peace in my household out of the love of God, but... I'm also not going to be mentally or physically bound by someone or something in this household either. Okay. That's going to distract me away from God. So if I got to move, if I got to disconnect from some folks, if I got to save my money in order to, to, you know, just do what it is that God has called me to do, then that's what I'm going to do. Just giving you an example about them priorities so that the love for God is the motive for everything you do. And then the last point, examine yourself daily to be sure you are giving God first place. Are you really giving God first place? God says, don't forget him. In Deuteronomy 8, it says, be careful to follow every command I'm giving you today. That's God, not me. So that you may live and increase and may enter and possess the land that the Lord promised on oath to your forefathers. This was given back centuries and centuries ago via Moses to his people. Whether they listen, right? <laughs> As you read the scriptures, you know, you know, they were always doing something they had no business doing. Verse two, remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the desert these 40 years. Okay, 40 years it took them to get to the promised land, to humble you, right? You went through these trials, you went through these tests, you got up, up out of that abusive marriage, you got up, up out of that abusive family, uh, you are no longer affiliated with this workplace or that church or whatever that had you mentally, physically, and spiritually bound. Hallelujah and praise the Lord. The Lord said, though, remember, to humble, to be humble, right? He, you went through the trials to test, to be tested. In order to know what was in your heart and you knew there was a lot of ugly stuff going on with you and it was coming out, you know, into your mouth and you out of your mouth and you got sick of that mess. I'm keep cussing and fussing with this man. This ain't me. My mom didn't raise me to be this way. I'm a happy person. I'm a peaceful person. I got with him. I started losing my mind. Right. Hey, I can I can put my hand up on that. So the Lord got you up out of that. And that's why we shout and we praise the Lord and we say hallelujah. And sometimes we do have to, you know, provide some examples to get some other people out to remind them. You remember how beautiful you looked. You remember how, you know, handsome you once were. And then you got mixed up with this woman and her family and everything else and got stressed out. You got so caught up in what she wanted, where she wanted to go, what she wanted to do. Right. That you forgot that you you uh, you don't even have friends. Because you were so consumed and now those people are dying all around you. And once again, you have over the course of, of time, right, decided that, well, I went through some spiritual trials and so forth, but I wanted to draw near to the Lord. And that's what you did. But for some people, you know what they did? They ended up going backward. Instead of forward, they ended up getting caught back up into the drugs and the alcohol and so forth. And some of the other ones, they got caught back up into pride and being mean spirited and nasty in their ways and so forth. You see, yeah, they were running a good race, but not anymore until someone died, until there was a tragedy, until there was an accident, until something happened with their brain. Right. Because sometimes things happen with the brain and she's not who I used to know. And he's not that person that I once knew. And sometimes people get so consumed with all of the negativity that they forget about the Lord. They forget to pray. They forget to go to the church. They forget to open up their Bibles, right? And study and show thyself approved unto God. But when you go through these spiritual trials, okay, or people around you that you know that's going through much, it's a humbling process that takes place. They were once on top, once talking about all of these things, right? I want power. I want fame. I want fortune. I want the house on a hill. I want the car. I want this. Okay. But then the spiritual trials come to humble you. And some folks, they're getting humbled because they, they don't have much time on this earth. See, so God is humbling them and putting all these spiritual trials in front of them because he's prepping them for heaven. Okay. He's prepping them for heaven. They don't have much longer. A man is blessed if he makes it to 70. 
Okay? After that, ooh, you portion it a little bit. <laughs> right? But it's God's mercy. It's God's grace that keeps a man here a little bit longer. So he's got to go through that humbling process if he's cocky and confident and prideful and so forth. So God, he humbled you, causing you to hunger, right? Ooh, I ain't felt like this in a long time. Feeling hungry. I forgot what hunger feels like. And then feeding you with manna. That's what that's what uh, took place with those folks who were brought up out of Egypt. Which neither you nor your father said known to teach you that man does not live on bread alone. But man, listen, man does not live on bread alone. Once again, for somebody, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Back when I took that 40 day fast, right? Because the Lord spoke to me and told me, you're going on a 40 day fast. I did. And it was a liquid fast. And then toward the end, it became an absolute fast, which means there was no food. There was no water. There was nothing. And let me tell you about that time in my life real quick, real brief. I'll tell you that this was what I stood on to get through. There it is right there. I told myself, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. And when them hungry times come, I stand on this. Because there's sometimes money is short. And sometimes you look in your refrigerator and you don't see anything that is healthy that you can eat. And so you walk away from that refrigerator and you rather deal with the hunger pains and eat that junk. Okay. There you are. You don't walked into a fast. Now, just imagine if you declare that time to the Lord. OK, you declare that time of hunger to the Lord. And I'll tell you, you got you get to experience some things that these people around you, they don't even know. Verse four, your clothes did not wear out. Right. Y'all remember when them times when those clothes were wearing out. But then. You got that money in your hand and life got better and your clothes don't wear out. It's as if you just bought them yesterday and they're 10 and 15 and 20 some years old. Your clothes did not wear out and your feet did not swell during these 40 years. How is it that your feet didn't swell? Because you got blessed with a vehicle or maybe two vehicles. And over the course of your life, look at how many other vehicles you had. And you didn't have to worry about your feet swelling. Well, can I tell you as a person who never owned a car? Can I tell you? I know what. I know what it, hurt, what it feels like when your feet hurt. Because you don't walk so long. Because you didn't stood so long. Okay? Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, so the Lord your God disciplines you. So the son and the daughter get disciplined. And the parents sit back and they get a little bit cocky, right? Once again, I got to say that again. <laughs> and they feel like, well, my son going through, my daughter going through, but I don't have to go through. But the Lord, the Lord, your God disciplined you too. He disciplined you about your money. He disciplined you about your purchases. He disciplined you about the things that you say and the things that you do. He disciplined you on that pride. He disciplined you on being self-absorbed, being disrespectful, being unforgiving. And he continues to discipline some of these people because of their behaviors. Sometimes it's not the parents. It's the parents' parents that are this way. Verse 6, observe the commands of the Lord your God, walking in his ways and revering him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land. And that's for somebody right now who needs to hear this word. Okay, you need, you need a confirmation. Here it is. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with streams and pools of water, with springs flowing in the valleys and hills. For some of you all, that just means a house near a beach somewhere. <laughs> a house where you can be able to see the water. A house where you're, it sits on a hill and you can look down and you can see all of that water. A land with wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, palm grenades, olive oil and honey. You notice how I'm reading it because I receive it because I know God had already talked to me about it before I got on this audio. So I'm just receiving and believing and trusting. A land where bread will not be scarce and you will lack nothing. A land where the rocks are iron and you can dig copper out of the hills. 
Verse 10, when you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God. Some of you all, when's the last time that you praise the Lord your God? Open mouth, out loud, hands raised. Praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. And some of you all, you need to praise the Lord for the land that you already got. You already got this. It may not sound exactly like the scriptures, but you already got it. When was the last time that you praised the Lord? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for my home. Thank you for my car. Thank you for the land that I toil, that I place seed in. And that the Lord, he sprouts up in due season. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the tools that I have that I use to keep my land looking nice, looking appealing to the eye. Praise the Lord for my talents, for my skills to be able to build up something to be able to save money on something. Come on. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God. Failing to observe his commands, his laws, and his decrees that I am giving you this day. Verse 12. Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build fine houses and settle and settle and settle down. And when your herds and flocks grow large and your silver and gold increase and all you have is multiplied, then your heart will become proud and you will forget the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, right? Who brought you up out of that house that had all them kids, that had holes in the walls, that was nasty at times because everybody was treading their feet, okay, across the floors and didn't take off their shoes and so forth. That house that you came up out of where there was some drinking going on, where there was some merry making going on and some of it was just despicable. That house that you came up out of where people were drunk, where people were smoking and sometimes you coughed and you were sickly behind their smoke. That house that you came up out of where people was always complaining about how they didn't have any money even when they did or those that really didn't have any money but they lied and they exaggerated and they covered up. Okay, to appear like they did when all of it was borrowed money. Jesus, when he brought you up out of that incest, when he brought you up out of that sexual abuse, when he brought you up out of the rape, when he brought you up out of all things that were ungodly and sinful, when he brought you up out of Egypt and out of the land, you will, what? Out of the land, what? You going to forget the Lord? No, you're not supposed to forget the Lord. When he brought you up out of the land of slavery, right? Some of you all felt like a slave. Even some of you all said, I ain't nothing but a Hebrew slave up in this house. Got to cook, got to clean, got to feed, got to take care of babies. Got to do this, got to do that, missing school and so forth. When he brought you up out of that time, right? He led you through the vast and dreadful desert where there was no, no drink. There was no water. There was no nothing, right? Because somebody didn't pay the bill. When he brought you up out of that that thirsty and waterless land with its venomous snakes, those backbiting folks, those folks that were lying on you, those gossips, right? When he brought you out of that household, when he brought you away from those people, right? Some of them were like scorpions. He brought you water out of a uh, hard rock, right? He gave you manna to eat in the desert. Something your fathers had never known. Some of you all, you were given food from this one and that one. Some people came over and said, here, here's some food. I know the babies are hungry. You remember those times? Sometimes mothers had to stand in long lines and fathers for some food. You remember, right? But he brought you up out of those times. And some of you all, you may be in those times, but it's not as bad. It's not as bad. And he took you through all of that to humble and to test you so that in the end, it might go well with you. In the end, it might go well with you. We went through the fires and the trials and so forth so that in the end, it might go well with us. You got to go through something before you start claiming eternal life. You may say to yourself in verse 17 of Deuteronomy 8, you may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. Some of you all said that you were bragging about it. You said, I got all of this because of what I did. I'm the one who got this job. I'm the one who sat there and and participated in the interview. I'm the one who picked up the phone and made the phone calls. And I, the, the nerve of folks up in this household saying this and that to me. Well, you may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But in Deuteronomy 8, 18, but remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. Somebody 
catch that. He was the one who gave you the ability to produce wealth and, to, and so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your forefathers as it is today. Verse 19, if you ever forget the Lord your God and follow other gods and worship and bow down to them. And some did in these occult associations and groups and so forth, bowing down, even down to the cross, even down to the cross. Well, you know, it's the cross. I mean, it's a relic. It's, it's a spiritual. It's if you looking at it as a God. It was symbolic. That was it. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He's off the cross. I testify against you today that you will surely be destroyed. Got your idols, little gargoyles and so forth. You got your little elves. You got your little strange symbols with the little snake on it or whatever. Well, the symbolic meaning of this is get rid of that. If it's taking up the time and it's taking up the energy and it's one of those things that God said, you shall have no other gods before me. Come on. I testify against you today that you will surely be destroyed. This is how he dealt with them back then. It's his grace and mercy the reason why some folks aren't destroyed right now. That their houses haven't burned down. And then some people, they can look back and say, maybe that's why mama's house <laughs> burned down. Maybe that's why daddy's house ended up burning down. What was in that house? What was that dragon looking shaped little thing that was sitting on the shelf? What was that little snake looking thing that was, what was that strange Bible that he had? It wasn't, no, it wasn't a Christian Bible. What was that thing? Like the nations, the Lord destroyed before you, so you will be destroyed for not obeying the Lord your God. You got the word. I know for some people, they're like, ooh, I should have never clicked on this message because now I'm responsible for the knowledge that I've received. Yes, you are. Jesus. Remember the Lord. Please do check the description box for anything that might be of interest. You've been listening to YouTube Enum Enterprise 7. Subscribe today. And also we do welcome donations, blessings to you, be encouraged.